were basically two types of wagons that pioneers used to travel the Oregon Trail on their journey west. This was a 2,000 mile trek that began in Independence, Missouri and ended in Oregon City, Oregon, some 50 miles to the southeast of current day Portland. Not all of them went the whole route. Some of them, fortunately for us, stopped off in the Walla Walla Valley and put down roots here because of the fertile soil, the lush grasslands, and the usually agreeable climate, and the free, free land was the main reason why a lot of people left the East Coast and the Midwest uh, to come out here to an unknown land. The lure of free land is always a good idea. When they got here, they knew that they would have to prove up the land, which means that they would have to develop it into uh, something useful. They would have to put up a house within a certain period of time and begin developing their ranch or their farm. There were other individuals, um, such as young uh, single men and women who came west. Some of these people came with the idea to bring their skills with them and start a business here in the young settlement of Walla Walla. Some of them actually were former soldiers from Fort Walla Walla that were stationed here. When they finished their enlistment contract, they decided to stay as well. And we're grateful for that. And there were others who just wanted an adventure and what a place to come if you need something new to do. Let's look at a few features of this type of wagon. This is considered a prairie schooner as opposed to a Conestoga wagon, which is usually much bigger and has the uh, slanted sides to make it look more like a boat, but this is a prairie schooner. The main features on it uh, are that it's made of hardwood, so it could hopefully hold up for the entire journey. The front wheels are smaller than the back wheels. Uh, that helps um, increase the turning radius of it. Also, before they left, a lot of times the uh, pioneers would put a layer of tar on the underneath of the undercarriage, and that would help in river crossings when they got there. You can see that they have some of their tools that they would use often on the, out, on the outside of the wagon. This bucket would hold the um, grease that they would um, regrease the hubs every night when they stopped for camp. Uh, they've uh, got their shovel here. They've got uh, their water casks that they would attach to the sides. They may also put a small cage to keep chickens or ducks in. They would basically have to carry everything that they were going to need for their new home in the west. However, when they reached the uh, Rocky Mountains, a lot of those things had to be left behind because the mountains were too steep and too difficult for their animals to pull. Now, most of the animals that were used to pull a wagon like this would have been a team of mules because they're a little bit sturdier, have a little bit more endurance than uh, horses. Uh, they're not as picky about what they eat, and they can go a little bit longer without water if necessary. Some people used oxen, but they didn't do really well in the mountainous areas. So mules were usually the preferred animals to pull these wagons. The, um, from 1840 to about 1869, approximately 500,000 people came west for some portion of the Oregon Trail.